Hi everybody, I'm Randy and welcome to Zephyr Travels. Normally you would see Diane here with me uh, sharing one of our adventures, but she's not able to join me in this video and I'm, that's what I'm going to be talking about. We have a story to tell you. Actually, I have a story to tell you and I hope Diane can join me in a later video to conclude the story. So if you're not a subscriber to a channel, definitely subscribe to it because you're going to want to hear the whole story and we're going to split that up over two videos. As you know, we like to travel mostly during the winter months. We tend to get away from the New York winters and we head to the southwest and we typically go for a six month period of time. This year we had a lot of things planned and it was probably one of the first years that I actually made a lot of reservations ahead of time. So I had the first three months of the trip reserved and I was working on reserving the rest of it um, at the time we left. We also had concert tickets purchased to go see Billy Joel at Chase uh, Field and we had tickets to go to the NASCAR race and Phoenix, which would, would have been the championship race season finale. We left the about the third week of October and we took our time coming across country and we made a few videos of different places we stopped and stayed at and our, you can check those in the uh, playlist below. Along the way, everything was great. We enjoyed ourselves. We took about 10 days to get out to the Phoenix area. We got here in time about a few days ahead of the NASCAR race. We stayed at White Tank Mountain. There is a video on that that you can check out. And we went to the NASCAR race and had a really good time. After the NASCAR race, we had another week and a half to stay at White Tank. And during that time, Diane started feeling sick. It was starting with a cough and flu-like symptoms, but really no fever. And this persisted for a while. And, you know, typically what you do when you have something like this, you know, you first test for COVID, which we did, and we came back for negative for COVID, so we felt good about that. So we figured, well, it's just gonna be a matter of time, you know, burn through this, she's gonna rest and take it easy, and, you know, stay in the trailer, and she'll get better. Well, a week turned into two, turned into three weeks, and she was not getting any better. In fact, she was really actually getting worse. She had a dry cough that was keeping her up during the night, and it was actually making her chest hurt quite a bit. So after one very uncomfortable night, I said to Diane, we've got to do something. There's an urgent care in town. At this point, we had moved to a campground in Cave Creek, and I said, let's go to that urgent care. So we went to the urgent care, made an appointment to come back a little bit later in the afternoon. They went in, saw Diane, talked with her, did her vitals and such, and said, we really think you need to head over to the emergency room, which is just down the street, and get x-rays. So we drove down to the emergency room. This happened to be like a satellite emergency room. It wasn't attached to a full hospital, but they did have emergency care. We went in there, they did her vitals, they were able to do a chest x-ray. After the chest x-ray, they decided they needed to do a CT scan. They did a CT scan and they came back and said, Diane, you have pneumonia, but you also have what's called a pleural infusion. And a pleural infusion is when fluid fills up the area between your lung and the chest cavity. And she had fluid in that area. And so they, suggested she see a lung doctor and they gave her pills, some antibiotics for the pneumonia and checked her out. Well, the next day we're calling um, the lung doctor trying to get an appointment and unfortunately trying to get an appointment, you know, over the phone to a doctor's office, it was going to be a while. And in this case, it ended up being almost 10 days, but they were, T talking to her and they're asking about her conditions and such and she no said that she noticed there was some swelling in her legs and I guess they at the emergency room they said she had a little bit of swelling in her stomach which is called an ascites. Well they suggested that we head to an emergency room to check out the swelling in the legs just to make sure there was no blood clots. 
So we went over to an emergency room. They did an ultrasound on her legs. Her legs came back clear. So there was no blood clots to worry about. And so we just had to wait the week to get in to see, in this case, it was a PA. We got in to see the PA. They did an ultrasound on her chest. They noticed there was still some fluid there. They gave her a diuretic to help um, pass some of the fluid. And they wanted her to come back where they could go in with a needle and drain the fluid out of her lung. And that was gonna be done at their satellite office. So we had an appointment for from Friday to Monday to go in and have that done. She went, the following Monday we go there, they again do ultrasound to see, see about that. They came back and said the fluid had gone down to the point where they weren't comfortable draining what was left there. You're looking good. We want you to get an x-ray in two weeks. So at this point, we're going to be down in Tucson, and this is going to be the Christmas holiday weeks. Found a place down there that we could get the x-ray done and send it back to the um, doctor's office. They said that it looks like it's clearing up and you're looking good. So we were comfortable that we could continue on with our trip because we had planned to go to California after the first of the year. But the cough still persisted. It wasn't as bad, but it still persisted. New Year's comes around and it's actually New Year's Day and we head to California. Our first stop was for a week in the Palm Springs area. And one of the things we noticed is Diane starting to feel worse and worse and worse again during that week. We spend that week there. We move into the San Diego area. We're camped out at Sweetwater um, County Park. And we had two weeks planned for there. And we were there literally just 24 hours. And Diane had another very rough night. And I said, you're going to the emergency room. So we take her to Chela Vista Hospital. It's Sharp Chela Vista. And they check her out and they actually take x-rays and they say, you've got quite a bit of fluid on your lung again. We're going to admit you. So she got admitted to the hospital. They drained her lung again. They took almost two liters of fluid out of her lung. And then they started looking for reasons why that might be happening. Now, typically, there's really two reasons that probably cause this type of fluid in your lungs when you're not having any other respiratory issues because she was well past the pneumonia that she had. One of them is congestive heart failure. The second one is cancer. They tested the fluid that they took out of her lung and it came back clear for cancer. They did an ultrasound on her heart to check her heart function, and that came back that she had very good heart function, so she wasn't having a congested heart failure issue. They did another look, they did another CT scan, they found that there was some thickening of her esophagus, her throat. So they did a camera down her throat, they did a biopsy of that thickening skin, and they also went down into her stomach. They found that she ha did have an ulcer that she didn't know she had. And they checked that biopsy, which again came back negative for cancer. After this, they decided to discharge her, thinking that everything was good, that they've drained the lungs, and maybe this issue is not going to come back. She's home for 48 hours. We're going for a walk. She's immediately losing her um, breath, having trouble to breathe. I'm taking her right back to the hospital after 48 hours, through the emergency room again, back into the hospital. Um, they admit her. This time, she had nearly three liters of fluid in her lung. They drained two liters. They can't take out more than two liters at one time. It's not good. They take out the two liters, and they suggest that she's going to have to have a surgery. There's a name for it, which I'm, I'm not sure it, what it is off the top of my head, I will put it in text down below what the type of surgery this is. But basically what they're going to go in, they're going to put a couple incisions on her side. It happens to be her right lung. So they're going to put a couple incisions on her side. They're going to put a camera in there into that cavity between her lung and her chest cavity. They're also going to go in with a tool 
and then they're going to put a tube in there to drain the fluid. And they went in there and they're checking to make sure everything looks good. Again, they found some um, fibrous looking area on her lung. They took a biopsy of that. And then they sprayed in a talc-like powder that is supposed to bind, fill, seal off the lung area so that she doesn't get the fluid anymore. She's post-surgery and they're just monitoring her for a while and she's in a wing of the hospital which is just respiratory. She has a tube coming out of her chest and they're monitoring how much fluid is coming out of her. And they're doing this for over the next week. And what they're finding is the fluid has not gone down at all. And it's concerning. The doctor who is her attending doctor for the floor and the lung specialists are very concerned about this. Well, one of the lung specialist doctors noticed that maybe it's her liver, that maybe she has an issue with her liver. So they do an ultrasound on her liver. It, it looks like um, it could, there could be an issue there. And so they're starting to lean towards liver. They bring in a liver specialist. She wants to see a CT scan and an MRI. So the doctors order a CT scan first. She looks at that. She says, it looks suspicious, but I need to see an MRI on that to do the MRI. And they do a, a, a larger scan because they found something suspicious around her ovaries. The liver looks good. There's no issues with that. They thought possibly it would be cirrhosis, but there's no issues with cirrhosis. So now they are looking at the ovary and they've noticed that she has a tumor. She needs to have this tumor looked at and taken care of, and a tumor on the ovary is very likely going to be cancer. Unfortunately, the hospital we are in does not treat cancer. They are, that's done at their main hospital. At this point, we're kind of worried about what are we going to do? This is already four weeks into our stay in the San Diego. We've ex left our two weeks at Sweetwater County Park, and we've now at the KOA in San Diego, and we're staying here on a week-to-week -week basis. So we're thinking that if it is cancer, that we probably need to go home and treat it there. But we don't know, is that the best thing to do? And so we kind of get a message to the attending physician, what should we do? Should we make plans to go home or should we try to find a doctor here to take care of that? The attending doctor sends Diane's case to a gynecologist who specializes in cancer and actually this type of tumor and she happens to be a surgeon. She re reviews her case and says, we won't know if it's cancer until we go in and do the surgery. There's a possibility that it's not because of some of your symptoms, especially with the, the pleural infusion on your lung, could lead to this not being cancer. But with this type of tumor, we always prepare the patient for a cancer diagnosis. So I'm not going to tell you it's not cancer. We're going to treat it like it's cancer. She wants to see Diane um, as soon as possible, actually. But Diane, unfortunately, is still in the hospital and she's really not ready to be discharged. So the team of nurses and doctors there worked very hard to make sure Diane could get discharged as quickly as possible. And I made an appointment with this cancer doctor to see Diane the following Thursday. So she had three days to get out of the hospital. I was surprised that they actually discharged her because she was not eating very well, losing weight, and you know dealing with a number of issues. But they did discharge her because they really wanted her to get to this cancer doctor. We made it to the doctor's appointment. The doctor met Diane, did an examination, and based on her chart said, we're gonna go in and we're gonna do surgery. We're gonna remove that tumor. It's also gonna be a hysterectomy and we're gonna get you in for surgery 
within the next week. At this point, I really want to bring Diane into the story and have her tell you what, what she went through once we went in for the cancer surgery. And I think we're gonna do that in the next video. So this is gonna be a short video, but you're gonna definitely wanna subscribe and follow along when we bring in the next video to find out if Diane actually has cancer or not. Ugh.